What's going on everybody? I'm Mike Berlin. You're watching Wild Fed Family and I just got a shipment in and it's a pretty exciting one. I do this once a year and what I got is a year supply worth of chicken. So let me go ahead and show you what that looks like and you're not going to think much of it but uh, it's going to become much much bigger. So there it is right there and what I got off behind it is a chicken tractor and in it right now I got I don't know eight egg laying chicks and three turkeys um, right here is the good stuff let's pop this thing open and uh, I'll show you what's inside there they are those chickens are gonna feed me and my family for one year now let me go ahead and get these things dumped out in the chicken tractor and I'll talk to you a little bit more about what I do So here it is, this is basically my setup. I got this chicken tractor and I got a tin angled roof on it with a latch right here so I can easily change the water and the food. Not that I have to do that often because in here I got a five gallon waterer and I also have a, gosh it'll hold probably 35, 30 to 35 pounds of feed. And I really only have to refill them every week maybe two weeks uh depends on the growth rate of the chickens so this chicken tractor is actually 16 feet long and it's three feet wide and every day i end up moving it so they get green fresh grass now when they're at this age you can probably go about two to three days before you move it and then you know their poo starts to accumulate around the feeders and the waterers and you have to move it just for cleanliness reasons but once they get bigger it's every single day but they have green grass fresh bugs and not only that it fertilizes your lawn now over here i have a heat lamp as well and i keep this heat lamp running for the first i don't know two to three weeks it really depends on the weather um if we get cold afternoons then i tend to keep it on a little bit longer but right now it is march 29th march 30th something like that so i try to get them right around the first of april that's right at our last frost date and these chickens will thrive and they're not going to get into the super hot season in june july so right before it gets hot and there's a threat of heat stroke etc they end up in my freezer cooled down so that's it that's all I got. It, it took probably five minutes to go ahead and get everything set up, get these chickens growing, and about two minutes of uh, you know chore time per day. But I'm gonna go ahead and I'll check back with you in about two weeks. What's up, everybody? Quick little update here. It is now two weeks and I want to say four days since I made the original video. So let me give you a uh, look at what the chickens look like right now and where we're going from this. Now, I would say every bird is probably about a pound and a half minimum, um, some closer to two pounds. As you can see, I just moved this chicken tractor, so they are all just having an absolute ball digging into this fresh grass. Now, let me show you what these chickens are capable of doing to this one little patch in just two days. This is where they were two days ago. A lot of that is chicken manure feathers and you can see my dogs eating up the leftover feed but they are to the point now where i need to start moving them every single day now like i said i also have some turkeys and some egg laying chickens in there that are getting pretty mature close to the point where i can move them down to the chicken coop so that's going to help out a little bit um, but these chickens grow rapidly and you got to stay on top of it make sure they always have fresh water fresh food they're going to be happy chickens and they're going to taste great so I'll see you back in two weeks. All right, well, here we are on week six and the chickens are doing really well. I have, you know, birds that are ranging anywhere from three pounds and then some are probably about six pounds. So in roughly two weeks, I'm gonna have, you know, fairly decent sized birds and they're gonna be ready to harvest. But at this point they are eating a bunch of food and they're, you know, really at their finishing process and they're putting on weight rapidly. Now with eating a bunch of food comes a lot of food that, you know, gets dumped out the other end. Now let me show you something. A couple days ago I had 
the stomach bug and I actually left the chicken tractor in the same spot for just two days and then that is just one day so right now it is important that you move these chickens frequently because not only are they getting a bunch of you know good food from fresh grass to eat um, but they'll also kill your lawn if you leave them there too long but that's all I got today I'll see you back in two weeks <laughs> Alright y'all, today is the day that the chickens go home to be with the Lord and they are going to fill our bellies. Now I got a couple things set up and prepped before we get started and uh, I guess the first thing that I'm going to need to do is get some chickens. So a lot of people put their chickens in cones, um, I prefer not to do that because one, it just increases the uh, level of adrenaline in them, um, every animal. That I've ever killed or hunted I've been told to you know dispatch without them knowing that they're being dispatched and you're gonna end up with better meat but when the animal knows it's coming I don't think that's really the best way to do it so I make sure they don't know that I'm doing it now let me show you what I got prepped before we go get the chicken all right so right here I have I don't know six seven gallons and I want that water uh, simmering at about 160, yeah, 155 to 160 degrees. Next, I got the chicken plucker with a bucket underneath it to collect the feathers. I got my garden hose set up, and in the cooler, I have a ice and water slurry so that once I get done plucking these chickens and getting the innards out, all I gotta do is toss them in that and they're gonna chill down rapidly. All right, so my water has come up to temp. Everything is prepped, ready to go, so. I'm gonna go uh, get some chickens and I'm only gonna do four at a time um, just so I can keep up with them and uh, you know, process four out real quick, get them chilled down, then go get four more. And uh, they are all probably within the six to eight pound undressed range. So on average, we're probably gonna end up with something about a five pound bird. But the time has come. So let me do my thing and I'll meet you back up at the little processing station with four chickens in tow. Well, there they are, guys. Now, these chickens got one single pellet right to the brain, and they're you know dispatched immediately. But what still needs to happen is I'm gonna give them a light rinse with the garden hose, trying to you know just get some of that mud and debris and you know chicken gunk off them, and then we're gonna go to scalding. All right, so I'm gonna need both my hands while I'm doing this, but I'm gonna just tell you right now, while I'm doing this scalding, um, I'm dipping that chicken in for, I don't know, 20 to 30 seconds, and all that's doing is just bringing that skin up to temp, and the feathers will literally just fall right off of it. Um, they need a little bit of agitation, so this is why I have a chicken plucker, and this is it and it's basically a drum it's got these rubber dowels all along the side got some leftover feathers from the last batch um let me turn this on and uh basically spins that chicken around the drum and while it's spinning it's agitating getting feathers off and i'm gonna be right here with the garden hose I'll, I'll be spraying it and that's gonna flush all the feathers out and it actually collects them in this bucket right here So I just made a mistake. Um, I dunked the chicken in the scalding water and I was not able to get it out with the wooden paddle spoon that I had. Um, 
so that chicken got a little overcooked so unfortunately that one turned into dog food but what i got now is i got a wire and i'm going to wrap around that chicken's foot so i can dunk it in and pull it out so let's try this again So here's my chickens and uh, I scalded this one for too long so the skin ended up cooking slightly and tearing um, but these other two turned out well so all I got to do is uh, you know get the innards out and uh, get these things chilled down but I'm going to uh, show you what it looks like after I get that done well there you have it that is one finished chicken all the way through I need to uh, get a little better on the timing for the scalding and it'll end up a little bit prettier as far as the skin on the outside but I'm gonna throw this in the ice bath and I got 19 more of these to do so not only do we have that whole bird but I want to show you some of the stuff I'm gonna save as well um, now I have the neck and I left the skin on it I have the liver I have the heart I have the gizzard and I have the feet now say what the heck am I gonna do with chicken feet well I'm gonna cook them down and make a stock because they're packed with collagen and flavor have I ever done it no but I'm gonna try the hearts livers gizzards now there's a couple different things you can do with them the hearts are really good just to fry up on their own same with the gizzards livers I'm not a huge fan so I tend to put those in stocks with the neck and uh, cook it down strain it out and uh, you got chicken stock ready to go in the pantry after you can it but let me get back to work so that right there is what learning from your mistakes looks like <clears throat> now i found that it's much better to go ahead and keep the temperature low and keep on dunking it till it's right the skin on the feet is a really good indicator if you can take your fingernail and scratch it off then it's good to go but I've done this before, but I don't do it every single day, so I'm not a professional. I do it once a year, and um, yeah, I'm just telling you what I figured out works, and uh, I hope that you don't ruin a couple chicken skins in the learning process, so uh, hope that helps. I just got done processing out the last chicken, so let me show you what I got, and I'll also show you where I'm gonna go from here. So in this cooler, I have a lot of chickens, 20 exactly. Um, I also have probably a 10 pound bag of hearts, gizzards, livers, necks, and I have 40 feet in a bag that is gonna make excellent stock. Now, I'm going to let these birds go through rigor and sit in this ice and salt water bath for about 24 hours and tomorrow afternoon i'm gonna vacuum seal them so i'll see you back tomorrow afternoon oh yeah so by the way all of the feathers and innards that i've actually covered up with the feathers so that youtube doesn't see it are all in that bucket that's all the unusable stuff so that goes into the compost and that is going to make some really good stuff for the garden so it does not go to waste well it's 24 hours later and those chickens have been sitting in the salt water ice brine and they're ready to get packed up and stowed away in the freezer so let me show you what that looks like so they're all nice and chilled down and uh what i don't want is all that water running off when i vacuum seal it because it's only going to compromise the seal so i gotta let them dry off a little bit and you can see how much of the blood has soaked out of these chickens being in this water bath so they're gonna be uh they're gonna be real tasty so I went ahead and did one just for a visual for you guys and I'll just use the food saver and uh, cut about a one foot bag, stuff the chicken in there, vacuum seal it and um, I can go ahead and just label this with a sharpie and this gets stuck in the freezer for future dinner. But like I said at one other point in this video, I have to do that 19 more times. 
So uh, I'll check back with you and show you what a pile of 20 chickens looks like. Well, I'm in my garage about to stack all of these chickens into the deep freezer. Now, I spent a couple hours and this is what I got here. 20 chickens, well, 19 because I had barbecue chicken last night for dinner, um, but I have chicken feet, chicken necks, neck skins, gizzards, under here is livers, and uh, every single one of these is packed, vacuum sealed, and ready to store away. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these in the freezer and I have chicken for an entire year. Now it's probably not gonna save you money. Um, you break out pretty even, but there's a couple reasons why I do this. One, it's fun. Two, you know where your chicken and your meat and your food is coming from. And three, it just tastes better. So that's all I got for this video. And uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. And I'll see you on the next one. Later.